Hey, we're uh, so excited to have a couple more people on stage than normal today. Can we welcome Josh Gain, Priscilla Gain, and Kyla Lyons? We're so glad they're here to talk about relationships. These are relationship experts, I think. You guys know everything about everything. Oh, it does work. So, hey, we're, uh, we're so pumped about tonight. Uh, the last couple weeks, we've been asking you guys to submit any questions that you may have about relationships. We've been talking about what it means to date like a Christian. We've talked about uh, the purpose of dating, the purpose of marriage, uh, red flags. We talked about becoming the person that you're looking for is looking for. We covered a lot of stuff. And we wanted to use this opportunity as a time to ask any like questions that anyone may have. So you guys sent in a bunch of stuff and uh, we're going to talk about that here in just one second. But before we do, I think it would be good to just like go in and see like to, uh, you guys want to hear like some like first date stories? I feel like that'd be kind of fun to hear about. Uh, really? So Josh and Priscilla, how did you guys get together? Like what was, uh, what was... You know, did, did you guys, uh, how long did you guys know each other? What, when did you ask her out? All that kind of stuff. Like, what, tell me a little bit about how you guys initially started dating. Great question. Do you want me to take this one? Okay. <laughs> um, I was actually here in college young adults. Actually. Shout out. So, hey, you never know. You never know. I've <laughs> been coming here my whole life, and I knew pretty much everyone who was coming to Crosspoint. Um, in a young adult uh, standpoint, and um, Priscilla came randomly. It's a really cool story. If any of you guys have the opportunity, ask her, um, and if she's willing to share. She's not the biggest talker, but... Um, That's why we put her up on stage. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. But uh, she randomly showed up to Crosspoint, and she was new, so I wanted to get to know her. Obviously there was some attraction there. So I still remember what she was wearing. That's, that's, that's what yeah. Was what was she wearing? Uh, she was wearing this fuzzy brown sweater, you know, uh, nice. It, I think it was kind of cold. So <laughs> fuzzy brown sweater, black jeans, and some, I believe, Nike Air Force ones, was, right? Yeah, white. Is that yeah, true? Yeah, I think so. Okay, so, um, you know, I played the slow game. I didn't, you know, pop out of my seat and, Oh my gosh, you're so attractive. Do you want to hang out? No, that, that wasn't my game. So um, my, my game plan initially, and I was very single at the time and very content being single, so, which was rare for me. If you, if you want to know that, uh, my past, we can talk later maybe over some coffee, but that was a little unique for me. So when she came in, she actually was ruining... Um, my commitment to being single for a year it was about six months in so um but i always said to myself man like if she's cool and you know things kind of work out I, I i have a feeling i'm probably gonna marry this girl wow. which was very bold in my brain but that's what i told myself so um, you didn't tell her that no, no okay no, no, no. good 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 yeah, good good do good, good. That. don't do that so um tried hanging out uh after a couple of weeks of her coming to college and adults and, um, you know, just kind of getting to know her as time went on. And then a friend of mine, a female, was having us over for some games and some snacks and, you know, charcuterie stuff. And uh, I thought that'd be a good intro. She's kind of new to Huntington and invite her, but um, she ghosted me. So, oh. yeah. Um, and she kind of warned me at the time. She was working a lot of, a lot of nights, but um, she goes to me, which, you know, didn't feel very good. Yeah. But um, a couple days later, she did text me, and we got together on a Monday and met at Pacific City when it kind of first started to ramp up. Um, we got some coffee. We got some French fries. Great combo. Don't... <laughs> Uh, together, not the best, but coffee first, then french fries, and we just talked, and we just got to know each other um, the first time hanging out one-on-one. -on -one. Um, no awkward moments, just four hours of getting to know one another. It was crazy. Crazy. Must but be nice. Yeah, yeah, no, it was, uh, it was very unique. Very unique. Um, I'm sure you guys have a great, great first time story, but uh, it took, took about a month to, like, get to know each other, hang out, and then um, 
just realize kind of where where our intentions were. And I try to make that very clear and ask her to make it official after a concert that we went to because someone asked me who she was and I said she's my gr she's my friend. This yeah. is Priscilla. So um, after that we had I made it a point to have that conversation about kind of where we were and and my intent for the relationship moving forward. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. So Priscilla, what were you looking for? Like you're kind of the new person coming in and, you know, getting harassed by people at church and stuff like that. Totally kidding. Um, but like, what were you looking for in somebody to date? At the time, I honestly was not looking to date at all. I had, honestly, I'd just gotten out of like a difficult eight year relationship. And so I, he actually broke my vow to myself to not date anyone for a year <laughs> after like three months or something like that. So yeah, I wasn't looking to date anybody and I was really, really content being single. But I knew that eventually if I like, in a, I would want somebody who loved Jesus, but also just ha like showed that in his character and I really wanted somebody who was selfless and caring and kind and honestly like someone that's just fun too and I love that about Josh like he's very he's all those things and I feel like we get things done but like we just have a blast and so yeah it's been good. that's so cool <laughs> But what made you, when you got to know Priscilla, what made her, because obviously you get, it's pretty serious now, you guys have a baby. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, like what, when you started kind of talking to her and started to date her, what were some qualities about her that, that you saw, like, okay, I can, I, I like what I'm seeing, I want to move it to the next level? Great question. Um, man, I can't think of anything. I'm just kidding. No, um, I think that first time hanging out, really kind of changed everything, like changed my perspective on dating and relationships. Um, if you know the Gain family, we love movies and we love um, rom-coms and we, we really enjoy, I mean, growing up in the church, you're not allowed to watch a lot of things. So <laughs> Disney Channel was huge. Hannah Montana, you know, throwing it back. Liz you McGuire. get the best of both worlds there. Yeah. <laughs> the best of both worlds. Um, so um, I had it played up in my mind that any dating or any sort of romantic relationship had to be like a movie. And there's another great Hannah, Mon Hannah Montana song right there. Um, <laughs> man, that's, that's really embarrassing. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Priscilla. Um, yeah, but uh, so after that first initial hangout, it was just, can I see myself just getting along and hanging out with this person for the rest of my life, like every day. Like that was my goal for the relationship. It wasn't, you know, do I feel butterflies every time? Obviously I, I still do, you know, but um, that wasn't my goal anymore. My goal was not to be a movie, but it was to, you know, be a little bit more of an adult um, when it came to the relationship. And she exuded a lot of those qualities. We aligned a lot on our values, on, um, on our activities, and just the things that were really important to me. It's, you know, Jesus, athletics, health, um, you know, and, and just personality qualities too, just really kind of mesh together very well. That's so cool. Man, I, I always get to love hearing like first date and like first meeting stories. It's always very fun to hear. I'll, I'll ask you now. I'll let you be the one to talk. Um, how did we meet? And uh, how did we start going out? All right. So we met when... Um, it's kind I, of a similar situation. You came yeah, into my orbit. Yeah, a similar situation. Yeah. So I, went, I moved from Indiana to Missouri um, to do for grad school. And then the first thing I wanted to do when I got there was I wanted to find a church. And so I, there's like so many churches in Springfield. So I looked up um, all the list of churches. I went to their websites. Anyways, ended up at High Street, which ended up being Rob's dad's church. My very first Sunday in Springfield, Missouri. Didn't know anyone in the entire state. Um, and it was really funny because I met a girl, like, right when I walked in. And she's like, oh, my gosh, hey, you need to meet my brother. He's a young adult pastor. I'm like, awesome. Two minutes later, I meet another lady. Oh, my gosh, you have to meet my brother, Rob. 
he's a young adult pastor. This happens three times, and I'm like, all right, are these people all the same family? <laughs> so, I have a lot of, I have three sisters. Three sisters. So I met him, so. I guess, all, like, boom, 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 right in a row. Um, so then I met Rob, and um, so he was then my young adult pastor, which sounds like creepier than it. That sounds is. way creepier than it is, I, I mean, think. You were my young adult pastor. We're the same we're age ish. Yeah. So. Anyways, so um, so first date. Am I going into that now? So we. <laughs> our first date. It's so funny. You make it um, seem like it's the worst first date of all time. What is? Well, hey, look um, at you now. Yeah. <laughs> so okay, so Rob decided to ask me out. Um, at a young adult bonfire after we had gotten to know each other. We had an event, and then he decided to wait until I was about to leave. I put my backpack on. Don't know why I had my backpack, but I remember having my backpack. I'm like, all right, well, I'm going to head out, and there's just people all around, and he's like, hey, Kyla, nice and loud for everybody to look. And I'm like, this isn't my scene, okay, to be in front of people. So I'm like, yeah. He's like, do you want to go on a date? Or no, 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 do you want to go to coffee? Yeah. And I'm like, sure. I'm just like trying to accept and get out. He's like, awesome. Do you want to go next Tuesday? <laughs> I'm like, I can't. Um, I'm busy. And he's like, well, how about, he starts trying to plan the date right then with everyone watching. I got very nervous, all right? Like, and I didn't. He's like, well, what about Wednesday? I'm like, he's pulling up his phone. I'm like, you know what? We'll figure it out. She was cool. She was cool I'm about like, it. We'll figure it out. So um, we went to, he picked me up. We went to coffee. Um, he ordered coffee. He also ordered coffee gelato. He doesn't like coffee, and he doesn't like coffee gelato. And he ordered both of those things because he wanted me to get the full experience because they were supposed to be really good there. Absolutely. Which is super sweet. And then, um, no, it was, our, our first date was really sweet. Um, I'm like, I don't typically talk a ton in the beginning when I meet people, but for some reason that night, I was saying everything weird about my family, me. This is how. It's like okay, everything that ever happened. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to tell him right now. Yeah, it was a lot to take in right at first. But so, this is how I first, I said, like, so tell me about your, your parents. And she goes, well, my parents are still together. And I'm like, whoa. You know what? <laughs> what? 50% of marriages end in divorce. Well, that I'm, is a valid That's the thing. weirdest way to say, yeah, I have two parents saying they've been married for a long time. That's the weirdest way you can say that, okay? So. That was our first date. It was very sweet. But well, it was the worst. Sweet, though, but, the, but the best part is that afterwards we were able to go back to like, we went back to my apartment with my roommate, um, who was a girl from my program that I had just met like a couple months before. And we just like laughed about it. And like we both knew that it was one of those situations, like we both knew it wasn't like maybe your perfect first date, but it was like sweet. I don't know if I was the smoothest person of all time, well, but the, the key thing that w she's not telling you because she's being gracious about is um, when I, we were walking downtown in Springfield <laughs> and I, I and I, um, we ran into my buddy Brad and um, we walk up and I was just like, I was like, hey Brad, how's it going? He goes, what's up dude? I said, hey, this is uh, Kara. My roommate's <laughs> name. I called her her roommate's I name. Didn't tell us that. Right, and I go. It was one of those things. It was like it was like a slow motion thing. It was just like, no, "Hey, man, this is uh, this is my friend Kara." No, I said Kyla. It's Kyla. Her name is Kyla. How fast so, were you just grabbing? Oh, just Kara trying to grab all the words out of the mouth at the same time. Come back, please. It was horrible. Then it was so great because we went up to her apartment with her roommate and we got to tell her the whole story. So that I think that helped break the ice a lot. Yeah. So you know, we it worked out. Kyla was very sweet and. Uh, we made it. We made it through, and we also have a baby and another one on the way, which is super fun. Ooh. So it's getting pretty serious between us, <laughs> which is nice. Only a little bit. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, you, you, we, a lot of times when we, when we think about relationships and dating and marriage, there's a lot of questions that, that come out with a lot of them. We have a couple questions that were submitted today, so we're just going to dive into those. And the first question that was asked was, what is the purpose of marriage? Why does someone get married? What's the purpose of marriage? Why does someone get married? Um, so I think like, I think God's design for the purpose of marriage, I don't think those questions are always answered with the same answer. I think like God's design for marriage, there's a lot of reasons. Um, but one of the like sweet special reasons is to ha just have somebody to do life with. You know, from the beginning of time, like we have always desired to have people and like when God created one human he realized like oh they need someone else to to dwell with and to do life with and not just the fun stuff but um like God knows the pain of living as a human um and 
just all the challenges that that brings. And so I think like just the, the holy like sanctity of marriage as how it's designed to be is like to do life together, to, um, to grow with each other, to point each other towards Jesus. Um, and to just like, yeah, have fun and, and, and grow. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. What about you guys? What would you say the purpose of marriage is? Great answer, Kyla. I, I love yeah. that. Um, do you want me to take this one too? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yes. Just that. Um, to me, I think it should be a reflection of what the relationship between Christ and, and his church, his bride, should be. And so, and kind of not showcasing, like you're not boasting about it, but like people who are not believers should be able to look at a Christ-centered marriage and be like, they're, they're different. Mm-hmm. Um, and one of the biggest reasons to me is like out of self-sacrifice and service for the for your spouse Mm -hmm. and so you graciously put Ephesians 5 on these notes which is where Paul really gets into that so if you want to look at you know marriage and the roles of wives and husbands in a biblical standard um, definitely turn there it's it's really cool it's really encouraging Um, maybe a little I'm not going to say outdated because it's the Bible, but culture will tell you something different, but this is God's word. So I think um, by living that out and showing and glorifying God in the way that he, um, he meant it to be and the way that Paul writes it in Ephesians, um, I think that's, that's one of the big purposes of marriage. Obviously, like Kyla said, there are so many, and we could probably sit here all night talking about it, but... Um, I would say that's that's probably the biggest one for us. Yeah, that's so cool. It's I think uh, you know when you think about the purpose of marriage, you think about what God intended originally. Like it was the when God made man, like you said, it was the first time He created anything. It was like, hey, this isn't good that man should be alone, and so He made a helper comparable to Him. And you know the what what some people like another question behind this question not, that we need to acknowledge too. Not everybody should get married. You know, marriage is not like a requirement for life. I think sometimes we can look, uh, married people can look at single people and, and kind of think they're less than, you know? And I think that's just such a wrong attitude to have. You know, we, the person we're reading, the Apostle Paul was a single man. You know, every time that you pray to Jesus, you're praying to a single adult. You know, like he, it, he was never married and that does not make you better um, it, or better than another person to be married. But there are benefits to getting married. You know, the first question, the purpose of marriage, we talked about, but then why should you get married? Man, I think, I think marriage really, like there is like this built-in community that you have together that you can, you can fill with some friendships in your life as a single person, but the thing about marriage is just like you're always together. Like for better or for worse, you're there. And the, like the marriage relationship is like a fast track to, to growth in your life because you're always with somebody else. You can't hide. You like your, all of your faults are glaringly obvious when you get married. Okay. I want you guys to know that you can't, if you think you can hide from your spouse, the stuff that you do, that's not great. It, it just comes out, you know? Um, and it's not, it's not always the best, but it's like the, it's the full length mirror that shows your selfishness sometimes. And what's great about that is an opportunity for you to grow through that. And so marriage is an opportunity for growth, but it so blesses you. Like a, like a really awesome marriage blesses you and the people around you. Like you said, it's a picture of what, what God, did, God did for us. And um, I would say another reason why, why should you get married, aside from like the reason it blesses you and it's, and it's a good thing. Um, so 1 Corinthians 7, Paul talks about literally, he's like, hey, if you can't control your sexual urges, you should probably get married. That's like, Paul just like lays it out there. He's just like, if you can't, if you can't handle yourself, if, you, if, if, you, if your urges are going to lead you into sin, then you should probably, it's better for you to get married than to burn with passion. Like this is, this is what Paul said. So that, that's, that's one of the questions, or one of the things I think about, like why to get married. But um, I think the reason to get married is, is that companionship, is to honor God, is to glorify God, to see a picture of God, to see that spiritual growth. It's a lot of fun. All right, the next question. Um, someone wrote in, is it okay to date someone who's not an atheist, but doesn't necessarily go to church all the time. Priscilla, okay. I'll ask you this question. Um, I think that no. Let's see. Yeah, no, that's a short answer. But 
Uh, I wrote some things down. I think it's a good idea to have conversations about it and ask good questions. Um, someone gave me really good advice once um, about dating to just take a person for who they say they are, not who they could be. And I feel like that's applicable to this question because, um, yeah, it's good to make sure that you have the same values as somebody because relationships are already really hard. And like from personal experience, my relationship before Josh, it was with someone who wasn't a Christian. And it's like, it's so easy. It's easy to like think that you won't be the one to fall, but it's really hard to, like at the end of the day, I feel like it's, it's so easy to just fall away from the Lord rather than have them come to the Lord. So yeah, I think no. Um, yeah. Very bold no. I like it. I like it. <laughs> I agree. That was fantastic. I like okay, it. Yeah, well, you, what about you, Kyla? When you, when you read this question, what do you think? Um, I think, um, I think like we can all, it's something that we can all resonate with. Like I, I know for me, like I got saved in college. And so when I was first saved, like I did a lot of the like, well, he was like raised Christian or like his parents are saved. And so like, you know, I think we can kind of like talk around the heart of the point. Um, but like the heart of the matter, at least for me, I had to get to a point where like I had gotten hurt in so many of those relationships because um, not that not that people who aren't saved are you know inherently bad or not awesome or can't be good boyfriends or whatever, but I think at the end of the day, like we have to kind of like you guys were saying, like think about um, your values and if if like if if you are saved, um, for me like once I got saved, church was a value because I know that like if we know that Jesus died for the church and loves the church. Um, and, and we want to be an active part of the church, um, then having someone who doesn't do that to start a life with, I mean, it's, it's going to be really challenging. And so I think, too, like, you know, people will s use the argument of, like, well, you don't have to go to church to be saved. Of course, like, God knows people's hearts. Um, at the end of the day, like, to be saved, we know what it takes to be saved is to believe in Jesus and believe that God raised him from the dead and, um, you know, to ask for forgiveness and accept him as our savior. Um, but also like we've talked about at church here on Sundays too. And we've talked about in young adults, that community aspect is so important and being part of a church body. And so I think like Priscilla said, it's so much easier to fall to like what we will naturally default to sin patterns rather than naturally default to like, it's not always easy to wake up and go to church. It's not always easy to, you know, show up and volunteer or be involved and serve. Um, and so I think, yeah, I think like, if you want to have someone who's going to push you to grow in your relationship, it's not like, okay, I'm going to be, you know, I don't, I don't want to drag somebody along. Like I want, I want us to both show up and be happy to be there. Yeah. I think too, with this question, it's like, okay, they're, they're not an atheist, but they're not like necessarily the, the most faithful church attender. You know, I think what, what the question behind the question, is it okay to date a non-Christian? That's what you guys have answered. And, you know, I think what you said, like you're either a Christian or you're not. Like you either, you either, like you said, you have accepted Jesus or you haven't. And then from there, like that's, that should be like your, that should, if you're a Christian, your base level of someone you're going to date is someone who loves Jesus, who accepted Jesus, who accept, who, who is made Jesus the Lord of their life. And then from there, I would argue that it's not a matter of like just barely getting in the club of Christianity. It's, does this person display the fruit of what a Christian would be like? You know, so it's not, it's not like a, you're not comparing them to an atheist or comparing them to somebody else. You're comparing them to, is this person, do they, compare them to the, to the word of God. I mean, like compare them like the fruit of the spirit. Do they, do they, you know, display these attributes? Are they someone who's consistent? I love the standard, the thing that you said, uh, like do, essentially don't date on potential, you know, like don't date on someone who's like, no, I think they could be really good. Like eventually they're going to be really good. Like, date on somebody who has a track record of, of good um, Christian values that actually impact their life in a big way. Can I add something? Yeah. If you're in this situation, um, that doesn't mean you have to, you know, excommunicate them. Like, just because you may have already jumped into a relationship, like, maybe have that conversation and not be in that romantic relationship, but if they're seriously interested in um, 
you, you know, they're, they're wanting to get to know who Jesus is, like, I wouldn't say give up on them, you know, like, don't, don't just ghost them. I, I, that's not a good representation of who Jesus is and what he would do. So, um, yeah, I just encourage you, if you are in this situation, um, there is hope, but don't be in a romantic relationship mm-hmm. hoping that 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 does come to fruition. Right. Don't missionary date. That's what we're, that's what we're saying. Don't missionary date someone. All right. Uh, this next question is kind of along the similar lines, but a little bit different. Um, it says, if my partner is a Christian, but part of a different sect of Christianity, say I am uh, evangelical and she leans more charismatic, um, sh- how much should that be concerned in regards to being unequally yoked? Like she is a Christian and still believes that Jesus died on the cross and rose again. But, of course, maybe her theological ideology is different from mine a little bit. And I think what they mean, charismatic is obviously evangelical, where, you know, I think from the our onset, like, if, we, if you think about, like, dating someone who absolutely is a Christian, just falls into a different camp than maybe you fall, I think it's something that you should pay attention to for sure. And I think as we set up this conversation, I'll ask you guys here in a second, but the, when you look at the, the different, uh, the few different camps um, of an evangelical Christian, you know, who really, like, the core tenets, they believe the absolute the same. But sometimes you have some different camps who have, like, a couple open-handed issues that they, there's room for interpretation on both sides. And so this person's asking, like, can you date somebody who the open-handed issues um, are open-handed and maybe differ, and I interpret them different than they interpret them? Yeah. So, like, maybe, uh, you know... Um, um, I'm blanking on an example right now. Um, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, we could, like, so maybe, like, if you, if you were somebody who, like, spoke in tongues, and that was a part of your, your worship to the Lord, like, there, there are a lot of really incredible Christians who speak in tongues, um, but if you're, if you're more of, like, a, a Baptistic background, and our, our church is Baptist, um, but we're not mad about it, like Pastor Bruce always says, which I so appreciate, um, but you fall into a different camp. That's not, it's not better or worse. Pe- people fall into different camps. But um, th- these are some of the questions that I think probably are coming uh, uh, up in some people's minds. So how would you guys, we'll, we'll start over here. How would you guys go about dating somebody or this question of they're, they're Christian, they just have a couple different theological uh, convictions than they do? Okay, I got this one. I got this one. Um, that was very well put, I think. I agree. Like the core of it, like if if they understand that there's nothing that they can do to get themselves into heaven and it's all Jesus, then those secondary issues shouldn't be a problem. But Priscilla may not or may do you want me to tell them what you, you wrote? I liked your answer. Yeah, tell no, us. I can just read it. Okay. 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 Uh I mean honestly I'm not really sure what all the differences are between a lot of denominations, but I think it just goes back to having conversations and hard questions, like a lot of things in relationships and just uh, getting on the same page or realizing that you're totally not on the same page and maybe it's not the right relationship for you. So that's That's really good. Yeah, and that's okay. Yeah, I think like, (laughs) because we have, this is kind of a little bit off topic, but it's, it's, you have to talk about things because not everyone's going to go on to want to have kids, and that's okay. You may get married, never want kids. That's totally fine. For us, we did want kids, and we have kids, and so, like, one of the discussions we had, I'm going to tie this back in, is I was very I adamant know. that our children would believe in Santa Claus one day, okay? I believed in Santa Claus. It was very magical. It was the best thing ever. Not the best thing ever. Obviously, Jesus is better, but <laughs> it was super fun, and so, like, Obviously, that's a really silly example, but, like, these issues that are open-handed issues, um, you know, it's, like, the Bible, like Rob said, it's up for interpretation, and people have different ideas of, like, what is, you know, what is the actual truth, or what did God mean by that? I think it's still important to have discussions around those questions, because if you do, whether you do want to start a family or not, like, it's really helpful to be on the same page, and so I think even sharing, like, you know, that can be an opportunity for spiritual growth. Hey, it's really cool. I've never, you know, I've never understood it that way. Why do you understand it in that way? Help me understand. You know, let's look through it together. Um, because the reality is, if you are going to raise kids together, 
at some point, you're gonna teach them one way or you're gonna teach them another way. And so you don't want that to be a point of contention um, if you do wanna start a family. So I think it's important yeah. to talk about that stuff. Amen. Wait, Rob, you don't believe in Santa Claus? No, no, I'm not, I'm not against Santa. Eleanor, I just didn't wanna. Eleanor is gonna believe in listen, Santa. Listen, so this is such a dumb honest, example. You can talk about Santa. <laughs> listen, I just didn't wanna like, I was like, we're not gonna tell her he's, she's, he's real though. She goes, absolutely. And I'm like, I just didn't grow up with that. So I'm like, that's so weird. To do, but I know I'm probably in the minority here. Okay, so I grew up and we had a dog. Yeah, I didn't believe in Santa Claus. I, yeah, it was but great. My parents told me these, to these not ruin it for other kids. Yeah, and I, I enjoyed I Santa. I just didn't believe that he got me presents. You know, it's uh, it's fun. Yeah, I think with this one, depending on, like, yes, you can date somebody who has a different theological belief than you, depending on how big a deal that is to you. You know, if you can, if it's not a huge deal. Um, and they're minor issues, you know, like open-handed issues, then yeah, absolutely. But if they are bigger deals to you, it's gonna, it's gonna like mess you up in the future. Absolutely, you should um, go on it. Okay, next one. We're gonna speed up this last couple, couple ones. This next one's a fun one, guys. Kyla, I'll ask you this question. What should PDA look like in a God-honoring relationship? That's a good question. Oh. Okay, there you go. Sorry. Um, I would say if you're thinking to yourself, is this too much? It's probably too much. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I don't know, like PDA is kind of weird. It's like one of those things that's like, you feel like it's sweet when you're the one doing it, but then any other time it's just not sweet. It's very uncomfortable. So I would say like, I'm not trying to give specifics here. I mean, it's, we hold hands, <laughs> very sweet, you know, just normal <laughs> stuff, the old, the old arm on the back. Don't be, everyone, everyone knew that guy in high school and girl who just were like making out every morning all the time. And but you're just you like, like it's what? Weird, and you like it's too much and you wouldn't do it around your grandma and your great grandma then it's too much yeah guys you have anything you add on this one i mean i'm like super not pda like i've gotten better but like when we first <laughs> started dating, this is mr rom-com <laughs> over here yeah yeah i know he was like too much at the beginning like and he wasn't even he's like really mild like he would literally give me a hug in public and like a big hug like come behind me and like hug me and just stay there and I would like freak out. So I'm better now, though. I am. I've made improvements. It's taken three years of <laughs> and a baby of marriage, yeah, yeah. And, and a baby. But I agree. I think, man, how lame would it be if you were in a relationship and there was no PDA and no one knew you guys were dating? Mm -hmm. That'd be so lame. Like, what's the point of being in a romantic relationship? <laughs> I'm sorry, like. I'm not saying, you know, be that high school couple and you're backing <laughs> all over the place. But, like, hold hands. Like, let people, like, show people that you actually like the person you're in a relationship with. You know, like, and obviously understand who they are. I had to learn that Priscilla is not a PDA person. Yeah. And I loved her in a way, you know, not showing PDA. So, um, or very minimal. But people knew we were dating, you know, like. So I don't want to say, don't do anything, or you're, you know, you're shunned from the church. No, yeah, yeah. like, I think, like, one of, one of the coolest things that um, my best friend has told me is, like, he looks at relationships and looks at people who look like they actually like each other, mm -hmm. you know? Like, I never really thought about marriages or relationships like, like that. So that kind of shifted my perspective on mm -hmm. PDA. Again... Don't be macking in church. Yeah. Don't be, yeah, don't be overboard. Yeah, my, my policy is don't be a psychopath about it, all right? <laughs> so if, you're, if your friends are like, Ugh, like, just be aware of that. Or ask your friends, like, am I doing too much? Is this awkward, us draped over each other? Um, so that's good. Wait, hold on, Kyle. Are you going to say the, the grandma what? one? The, the grandma, grandma one. one. The Oh, she said like, it. Yeah. Don't, yeah, don't do what you wouldn't do in front of grandma. Yeah, yeah, that's unless a good one. Like that. Unless you have a weird relationship with your grandma. Then just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just take that out. Yeah. yeah, just, that's another whole thing. All right, next question. Okay, is kissing okay? Is kissing okay? You guys started this one. We've been starting. Yeah, you guys go. I mean, we kissed when we were dating. Are we talking about dating here? Yeah. So here's the thing. I think, like, you know, we... Everybody wants to ask the question, like, really, we want to get to, like, how far can we go is really what's behind it. Like, you know, when you're dating someone and you like them and you like them a lot, like, the reality is you want to always push the boundary. So I think, like, 
I think um, that might look different for different couples. Obviously, like the Bible is very clear about what is like not okay in dating um, and what is prohibited outside of marriage, like any, you know, any sexual anything. Um, I think kissing personally, I don't have a personal conviction against kissing. We have friends who waited until they were married to kiss to protect themselves. So I think it's a discussion and it has to, it has to be an ongoing discussion. If you are going to have a relationship with someone and you wanna keep it God honoring, it has to be an ongoing discussion because naturally all of us will go to our flesh and we want to push the limits and keep going a little bit further and further and further. Um, and so I think like it has to be an ongoing conversation. Um, and so if you feel like you can kiss each other and keep it there and be cool with it and you know not push it past that, then great. If you can't and it always is leading to the next thing, to the next thing, to the next thing, then I think that's like something you have to, you know, talk about in your relationship and pray about it too, and have like that personal conviction. Um, yeah. Good. Thank you. That was great. Do you want this one? Yeah, I mean, similar with physical touch. Weirdly, even though I don't like PDA, it's like top for both of us for our love languages. So for us, yeah, we. I think kissing's okay in a relationship, but. Um, Something Josh would always say, like when we were dating, was like he would always like check us basically and say, like, is our relationship not just with kissing stuff, but like, is our relationship glorifying to God? And if it is or it isn't, like, what do we need to start doing or stop doing? And so, yeah, I could see why people like are against kissing because it could be like a gateway into like going too far. But yeah, I think it's okay. It's a gateway drug. That's what it is. I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> That's supposed to be a joke. Sorry. Um, some of you guys are too serious over here, okay? That word today. Yeah. No, I think, I think that's great. I think ex exactly what you said, like, that, like, it's a better question than how far is too far is what is going to glorify God the best in this relationship? And I know in, um, you know, I think of, I think of uh, Song of Solomon, uh, chapter 2, verse 7, and he's, they're, they're talking, if, if you want to, you know, hear some crazy stuff, read the Song of Solomon. Um, but they, they say to not awaken love until the time is right. Don't awaken love until the time is right. And what, what that tells me is if you are doing things that really, uh, that provoke an outcome that is dishonoring to God, like any sexual expression outside of marriage is something that is, is God does not like, not because God's up there arbitrarily saying, hey, don't do this, do this, and for whatever reason. He, anytime God says don't do something, it's for your protection. And it's, it's there to serve you and to bless you. And so what God is trying to tell us to do is to make sure um, that you don't, like, don't stir up something before it's ready, you know? And so that's why I think if you, if, like you said, if you feel like you can kiss appropriately and a way that's gonna make sure you're, you're, you're good, then great, but if you can't, uh, you need to be aware of that. And um, all right, the, the, we have a couple more questions. When we'll real finish quick, up. Quick. Yeah. Would you say that that's per kissable? It's permissible. <laughs> On my notes, I made a little joke. I didn't think anyone was going to see it. Then I was going to go past it, but then Josh brought it up. So I said, if you can kiss in a way that doesn't stir up sexual urges that would lead you down to the path, it's permissible. Then I made a joke in my head. This is how my brain works all the time. Then I said, it's actually per kissable. <laughs> you know. See, that's sorry, why I don't, I don't want to bring it up, Josh. I'm sorry. That Goodness God gracious. Good, dude. Oh, man. It's I like, yeah, this. it's not good. All right, a couple more questions will be done. Is there, this person asked, is there someone exactly meant for you or is marriage slash dating more of a figuring life out with someone who has the same values as you? Um, I don't think there is one person for you and the world, but I do think that God knows who you're going to end up with, and I also think that once you get married, that's, that's the one. Yeah. That's my belief. I agree. I think someone close to me told me that, you know, his belief is that there's not one person, but God kind of guides you. He has, like, these rails that kind of guide you to that person, and it's kind of up to you to choose whether or not you are going to pursue that, but... Um, at the end of the day, yeah, God does know everything, and um, he kind of changed my perspective a little bit on that, too. 
Kyla? Um, yeah, I agree. I think no. I think as much as like every couple wants to think that they're like the exception, you know, you're like, no, we, we really like each other more than everyone else. Like we're, you know, like I guess maybe. Kyla and I thought that we were just like, I don't think anyone's, anyone's ever <laughs> loved each other as much as we have loved each other, like, we you know? Think that we're the exception of like, no, but for real, we really, it's, <laughs> it's different for us. But I think like, I think going into a marriage, um, with the idea, because you hear people say things and they're often like even in movies or in songs, but you even hear people say it in real life too, things like you complete me or like I never knew what I was doing until I met you and now I'm finally whole and these things that are like really supposed to be sweet. Um, but I think if you come into a marriage with these expectations that any, per any person on the earth um, is your one person that's going to complete you, then you're setting yourself up for failure. Mm -hmm. um, not because marriage is not good, but because that person will never live up to those expectations. Um, you will always fall short. And so I think like recognizing, I mean, I love even just how the question is written. Um, you know, it is, we are figuring life out with someone who we have chosen, like God's design for marriage is we are choosing that person and we're going to continue to choose them every day. And it's not easy um, all the time. Sometimes, some days it is, some days it's not. But like, it's a conscious choice. And um, yeah, like two imperfect people figuring out and, and doing life together. Absolutely. No, you guys answered that well. Um, I, I love what uh, Kelly said, who preached for us a couple weeks ago, about you know, it's not about finding the one; it's becoming the one. So it's becoming the person that you're looking for, is looking for. You know, trying to, and then, like you said, as soon as you get married, they're the one for you. They're, they're, you don't, you don't think, man. I you, a lot of people when they get married, like, like seven, eight, nine years in, are like, gosh, I just realized I married the wrong one. I married the wrong one. I missed out. And the reality is, is like whoever you married, that's your one. That's the one who God made for you. And uh, you know, the whole idea of like, you know, it, God, God wants to give give good gifts to His kids. Like God wants you to have an amazing marriage relationship. He wants you to feel like you guys were just fit together. And like, I, I know that you guys, like there's so much compatibility between you two. And for us, there's so much compatibility. And we're just like, gosh, man, I can't believe like that you, like we have, there's so much in common. There's so many incredible things. And it's as, almost as if like we were made for each other. And I do think there is a level of God, you know, he wants to give, give good gifts to his kids. And he, he wants to guide you to someone who you can be blessed by. Uh, but as far as the, the one, I think that's uh, a myth. Mathematics. Would, Math, yeah, mathematically. Because yeah, one person one. would just have to marry the wrong person for the whole, you know, supply chain to be off there. Um, all right. Let's, uh, let's skip down to uh, this last question here. Uh, is it considered dating if you are just talking uh, or if you were just ta taking the time to get to know someone to see if you have interest in a future with them, ex what exactly constitutes a date? I think it all goes into intention. I think hanging out one-on-one, -on -one, opposite sex, this is a little testy, but like if there's absolutely nothing there and you guys are just friends, that, that's not a date to me. Um, but I think, and Priscilla would agree, making your intentions known. One helps both people kind of get on the same page or gives the opportunity for people to say, hey, that's not for me, you know? So um, I think it's, an, it's a date if there's a romantic intention behind the, the hangout. Mm -hmm. Ladies, anything to add? Yeah, no, I agree with that. I think it, yeah, it's all about the intention and just like having those conversations to just like if it's something that you have a question about, I guess, I feel like like I've always appreciated that Josh is like really upfront and like quick to not have me have questions like his story about um, like when we went to a concert and he kind of was like didn't know how to introduce me. Like literally, it was the next day or like two days later, we had the define the relationship conversation and like I, we were, yeah, we started seriously dating at that point. So yeah, I think it's about the intention and making it clear to one another. Mm -hmm. That's good. On the flip side of that, sometimes we can be, people can be hanging out for a long time and there's just a lot of confusion about like what's going on. Kyle, speak to that a little bit. 
I mean, I think like in this era that we're in, dating is not always as black and white as it used to be. And so I think people, some people love to hang out in like the talking phase for like so long and it can leave people really confused. And I know for me, like that led to a lot of hurt in college where I would think I was dating someone and then they would be dating somebody else. And so I think like, um, I think if somebody's stringing you along, like whether you're a girl or a guy in here, if somebody will, like if it's been enough time for you to get to know whether you either want to date or you don't want to date and they just keep dragging you along, um, starting to think like, hey, they probably don't have my best interest in mind. And it can be hard because especially if you're like, man, I really want to date that person and they like hanging out with me. But like, you know, if they don't want to have conversations, if it's been some time, like an adequate amount of time and you feel like you've spent enough time, like either you, you want to date them or you don't. And so it's not fair, you know, on either side of it, it's not fair to like just stay in the talking phase for months just to pretty much do whatever you want to do but not commit to someone, in my opinion. I think it leads to a lot of hurt. So yeah, communicating expectations, being really frank of like, hey, we've been hanging out a lot, you know? Do you, like, Rob asked me like, do you want to go on a date? And then eventually we had the conversation a couple months later, like, do you want to be my girlfriend? Which, you know, so I think those conversations are important to have just to avoid the hurt. So guys, what you should be hearing from this is tell a girl if you like her, hey, so-and-so, I would like to take you on a date. Like, not a lot of people are doing that anymore, so you will, like, be head and shoulders above other guys if you just are clear with your intentions about what you are feeling. So, hey, that's, uh, that's all the questions we are able to get to right now. Guys, can we thank uh, our panel for being here? You guys, you guys can go ahead and head back. Um, hey, real quick, as we, as we conclude this series, um, I just want to take this opportunity just to pray over um, all the people who are in this room right now. Whether you're dating, whether you're engaged, whether you're married, uh, whether you're single. Man, I, you know that God wants you to have incredible relationships. He wants you to have incredible dating relationships. He wants you to have incredible marriage relationships. And one thing that I think uh, is so important to do, um, especially when we, when we finish up a series like this, it's like, we should use this as an opportunity just to ask God, be like, God, could you, could you give me an incredible marriage relationship one day? God, could you give me someone to date? Could you, could you do this? Because here's, here's what we know. This is, God, this is something, he wants to bless his kids. He wants, he wants you to have an incredible relationship one day. He wants you to date somebody and, and honor them and to, and to glorify him. And one thing that we know about God is he can do anything. He can give you that person that you're looking for. And he's so powerful he, and he wants to bless his kids. So the thing we've been talking about a lot this, this uh, semester is this whole concept of it can happen, God can do it. It can happen, God can do it. And I know there was a season in my life uh, where I just didn't think it was gonna happen for me. I didn't think that a dating relationship would happen. And, you know, I'm not going to promise that everyone in here is going to get this most incredible uh, dating relationship. Or I, I can't even promise you, you're not going to be single for a long time or ever. But what I, what I can do is we know that God says to us in his word that whatever you need, ask. Whatever you need, ask. And so I don't know where you're at in here tonight. I don't know whatever, what do you need? Like, what, do you, what is your heart's desire? Do you desire one day to be married? Do you desire one day to have a family? Do you desire one day to, to be able to have this romantic relationship? If that's you today, why don't you just take this opportunity? Maybe you've never done it before. What if you just take this opportunity and ask God, be like, God, could you, this is something that I desire. Would this be something that you could give me? And maybe if you're married in the room, you could say, God, would you, could you help me to have the best marriage ever? Give me the best marriage possible. We know that God would want to transform us to become the people who he wants to become to accomplish what he wants us to accomplish. And these are two things and two questions and prayers that I really believe that God would want us to ask, especially as we close out. So tonight, if you would just pray with me, and as I pray, maybe you just pray in your, in your heart and just, and just ask God some of these deep desires that maybe are unfulfilled, that God would just do this, that he would show up and he would, and he would give you the desire of your heart in this scenario. Would you pray with me? God, we come before you and I just pray for every single person in this room, every person watching online. God, I know that so many of us have this desire to have this relationship. 
God, I pray that you would give them, they, that every person in this room would do the work to become the right person. I pray that every single person in here would, would dive into what it means to follow you better, to dive into Christian community, to dive into to displaying the fruit of the Spirit in their life actively. And God, I pray that you would bring the right person at the right time. And Lord, we know that you can do anything. We, we believe that, that you can actually give everybody in this room an amazing marriage relationship. And so Lord, we just pray that you would do the work in each of our hearts now to prepare us for that time. And God, for those of us who are married, Lord, I pray that you would just continue to refine us, to make us into a person that glorifies you, that serves our spouse. And God, we just pray that we would be a people in this room who date different than everybody else, who date different from the world, who honor you and glorify you. And Lord, we just pray that you would do this. And it's in Jesus' name we pray, amen.